our Earnings All-Stars video. Earnings season is still going on, and this week we're having some of the big retailers and a few more tech titan type stocks going to be reporting. So which one should you be looking at? It's not all retail this week, so I've brought five companies you should be checking out for their earnings reports, their charts. Can they keep beating what are they going to say on the retail side? Because yeah, some of them are retailers this week, obviously. And this is going to be kind of a key week for what kind of information we're getting out about the consumer. So let's take a look at some of these charts because I think some of them might surprise you. So let's take a look first off at Target. So what is going on with Target? You can see it has a good earnings uh, history here, except for 2022, where suddenly we started to get all these misses. So it didn't even miss back here. Uh, this would have been the quarter right here that when the pandemic hit, but it wasn't missing then. We were only getting these huge earnings beats because of the pandemic, because we were all racing out and buying desks and everything else. Shares got to these new highs here, but it's been almost round tripping here on the way back. And I know a lot of people who are big Target supporters are pretty upset at what this chart is doing. But we've had three earnings beats in a row here, and the last one was pretty big at almost 36%. Now, the shares have gotten a lot cheaper. They were pretty expensive there during the pandemic rally, but now back down to 14 times still paying that dividend yielding 4.1%. Uh, so what will they say this quarter or will it even matter? Because even after these three beats in a row, we still have the shares turning lower here still. So this is one that everybody is definitely going to be watching this earning season. And then I wanted to switch over to one of the big tech companies that's going to be reporting Palo Alto Networks. Look at this chart. It's just fantastic. Cybersecurity side, no misses in five years. It, it just doesn't get any better than this. It's also hovering right near its five-year highs there. Uh, Year-to-date, those shares up 81%. But on the flip of the target valuation, Palo Alto Networks now trading at 47 times. And that's a little bit of a warning for me, especially as the economy starts to slow. I know they're in a hot area. There's no doubt about that. And it's got this great earnings surprise track record. But even last quarter, just a 12% beat, 19. This was a bigger one here, 34%. Um, but we're waiting to kind of see, can their business slow down? Or if it doesn't, what are you willing to pay for these earnings? Right now, the street's willing to pay 47 times for these earnings. That's more than any of the Magnificent Seven. So this is definitely going to be one I'm going to be watching on the tech side this week, along with Cisco, ticker CSCO, um, also one of the big techs you should be watching. Uh, but I'm going to switch it back over to the retail side because that's still the prominent uh, area that's going to be reporting. And the other big one, in addition to Target, is going to be Walmart, ticker WMT. This chart looks a lot different from Target, and it's busting out to new highs, as you can see. It's got five beats in a row, pretty good earnings surprise track record with just those three misses. So I like that as an investor. But this stock also, like Palo Alto Networks, is not cheap at 25.8 times almost 26 times for Walmart's earnings. And while those earnings haven't been bad, it is a slower grower than it was, you know, 20, 30 years ago. So it is still, as I mentioned, pretty expensive here. You do get a dividend, but yielding now only 1.4%. But this stock has some momentum and we'll see what it does this quarter. And then I'm going to stick it on uh, the retail side with Williamson Sonoma. Uh, you know I like these furniture companies. I've talked about Williamson Sonoma many times. It's only got this this one miss last year as the rates went higher and home sales dropped. So do furniture sales, and then it missed, but just barely 1.6% miss. 
But what's going on with these recent beats? So this was a 14 percenter. Then we had a nine percenter and this one barely beat 1.6 percent. But the shares are off the recent sell off here and year to date up 29 percent. Two years, though, still down 29.5%, but it isn't retracing, not yet, back all the way down to these 2020 lows, which is when the pandemic boom you know, really took off. Everybody was staycationing, buying outdoor furniture, the school desks for the kids, renovating their homes you know, hating, you know, their dining room set or whatever and buying up furniture galore, plus the super red hot housing market meant a lot of furniture sales as well. That is all cooled down. But what does valuation look like? Williams and Sonoma now trading at 10.6 times. So it is pretty cheap here with a dividend yield of 2.4%. They've always been shareholder friendly. So they've always kind of kept that dividend on the little elevated side. But they are one of the top furniture retailers. I'll be interested to see what they report this quarter. And then we're going to wrap it up, staying on the retail side with The Gap. I've talked about them over the years. Then I didn't talk about them because they were putting in these big misses. They still have some big misses, including this year uh, with a 27% miss there. But the last two quarters, they seemingly have turned it around a bit. 105% there. That's enormous. And this one's even bigger, 277%. So these shares too are off the recent lows, up year to date, 19.5%. But over the two years, still struggling down 45%. So this one definitely um, almost round tripped earlier this year, but now is up off these lows. Is the worst over on the sell off? We don't know. It's pretty cheap, but not dirt cheap anymore uh, because shares are up, but earnings, while maybe uh, recovering a bit, haven't recovered enough. So it's still trading at 18.6 times. You still do get that big dividend yield, 4.5%. It's still yielding and they haven't cut that. So for now, investors who like the income are still getting the income. So this is one I'm going to be watching. It's got a lot of different brands, a lot of things going on, but a lot of the uh, you know mainstream consumer is represented in their brands, especially like Old Navy. Um, and then you even have the luxury side, more luxury with Banana Republic, and you have the athleisure with Athleta. So what is going on at The Gap? Is this turnaround for real? We will see. So as you can see, I'm bringing some interesting charts to you this week, and the retail side is a mixed bag. We we won't know until we get these reports in what's really going on out there because furniture is different than retail versus even food, which is what Walmart and Target I have a big component in as well. We're also going to get Home Depot this week, ticker HD. And that's going to be a key one for, you know, appliances, home renovation side and all of that good stuff as well. Um, what's going on there, especially with these rates being higher, is anyone remodeling their kitchen with the higher rates? We will see. But as I mentioned, there's a lot going on. You want to be sure to subscribe to get all the earnings all stars videos. We still have a little bit of time left in this earnings season. It's not quite done yet. So I'll still be doing some more earnings all-stars charts as we move forward here. We still haven't heard from NVIDIA yet. And so that one will be coming up too. So be sure to subscribe. Get us at sax.com slash YouTube. Get us on Twitter. I'll tweet out these videos plus more charts as the week goes on. But be sure to get us somewhere. And I'll see you again next week with some more earnings charts.